in-depth, investigative. This is KXAN News Today. Good morning. We have a live look from our Estonian camera that you can see behind us. You can see the raindrops that are falling. It's a good Monday morning for some rain. I'm Sally Hernandez. And I'm Tom Miller. It was uh, pouring on the way in this morning. We have meteorologist Sean yep. Kelly here with us. So. What can we expect? More more rain and, and more cold. That's right. We've got rain, cold weather, and maybe our first freeze of the season for mm. some as well here. I know, big changes in the works. We're seeing that ongoing steady rain. We have that for your early morning commute. A live look on the Austonian weather camera. You can see it is very wet out there. We continue to watch out for maybe even some patchy areas of some heavy rain through the later part of the morning. But yeah, it is cold. It's frigid. We're dealing with a good soaking heavy rain, light to moderate down towards the south, but heavy rain from Round Rock into the Georgetown area, some scattered light rain into portions of the hill country, some steady rain out towards the east. So every single county uh, dealing with that this morning. And to add to that, it is chilly out there. Winter jacket weather needed here and the umbrella, 39 in Lano. It's 37 in Cherokee, 37 in Land Passes, and metro temperatures here from Driftwood into Florence at 38, 39, up down through Kyle area into Wimberley, 41 from Pflugerville into Taylor, and then out towards the east here from Smithville and LaGrange. We're into the low 40s. You factor in the gusty winds as well, and it feels even colder than that today. And if you are going to be heading out and about, uh, maybe heading out on the trail, you're going to be dealing with the rain, but those rain chances do lower as we get into the afternoon and evening. So we do here, not for tonight, but for Wednesday morning, could see the first freeze of the season for some, not all. We'll show you those areas when we dry out ahead and when we warm up as well. That's coming up. Well, with the sudden swing in cold temperatures, the city of Austin opened up its warming centers. If you need a warm place to escape the chilly weather throughout the day, you can go to any park or library facility in Austin during normal business hours. And if you have a service animal with you, you will be able to bring it in. Now, going in depth here, warming centers are different from cold weather shelters, which the city says are opened in cases of an emergency weather event like the ice storm we had earlier this year. Cold weather shelters are activated if the forecast calls for temperatures of 32 degrees or colder overnight or 35 degrees with rain or 35 degrees with the wind chill of 32 or colder. Sean, thank you. We know jury selection is going to start today for the woman accused of murdering a professional cyclist named Anna Mo Wilson. Caitlin Armstrong is a suspect and she has pled not guilty in, Jan in July of last year after a 43 day manhunt where she was ultimately found and arrested in Costa Rica before being extradited back here to Austin. Wilson was shot to death in an Austin home back in May of 2022. You may remember Armstrong gained a new felony charge earlier this week when she tried to escape from law enforcement when she was waiting to go inside a medical building in South Austin. The search is underway for a suspect accused of killing three people and injuring three others in a Texarkana shooting over the weekend. The police are searching for 20-year-old Brioski Warren. They say a fist fight broke out between two men at a party around 9 on Saturday night. Officers add that Warren and another person, another man, pulled out rifles. They started shooting. One man died there at the scene. Another man and woman died at the hospital overnight. Three other victims are hurt and may not make it. Officers say they are still searching for Warren. Detectives overnight were able to identify a 20-year-old, uh, Brioski Warren, who uh, was at least one of the shooters down there. We were attempting to uh, locate them. They did get a warrant for him for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon overnight. Uh, so we are attempting to locate him. Anyone with information on this case or who knows where Warren might be is asked to contact police. Along with the Texarkana shooting, there was a deadly weekend all over the states with at least six people dead and more than 40 others injured in several shootings. In Indianapolis, a woman is dead. Eight others hurt after a shooting at a large party there on Saturday. Police say all of the victims are 16 to 22. Officers detained several people for questioning and found multiple guns at the scene. 
And in Tampa, Florida, two people died and 18 are injured after a shooting during Halloween celebrations there. Police say a fight broke out between two groups of people on Sunday morning. They arrested one man, charged him with second degree murder with the firearm. In Chicago, similar stories. Fight breaking out Sunday morning and a person started shooting. 15 people are hurt. Two of them might not make it. We know one man is in custody there. In much of Maine today, people are returning to work and to school for the first time since that mass shooting in Lewiston that left 18 people dead. It's a small sign of some sense of normalcy back in that small town. This morning, three shooting victims remain hospitalized in critical condition after that attack. NBC's Chris Pallone has the latest on how that community is coping after tragedy. In Lewiston, Maine, a massive outpouring of support for the victims of Wednesday's massacre, their loved ones, neighbors, and friends. It's my hometown. I've lived here forever. So I just needed to be here. So many people felt the same need that the crowd spilled out of the city's Catholic Basilica and into downtown Lewiston. Now that the search for the gunman is over and shelter-in-place orders are lifted, people in this small, close-knit community are doing everything they can to show resilience in the face of tremendous loss. I don't even have words. I'm, what I think we're all in shock. And, and the worst part is I can't do anything but be here. The service at the Basilica, just one of several similar gatherings at churches throughout the region Sunday, as grief-stricken and shaken people turn to their faith for comfort and guidance. At the two sites where the gunmen opened fire, people have been leaving flowers, balloons, signs and notes. Just a few feet away from one of these memorials at Shemengi's Bar, police continue working diligently to process the crime scene. Joan Barker drove 40 minutes from Portland to lay some flowers and offer her condolences. Um, I just wanted to show some support for the community up here. Uh, I felt really helpless the past four days just having to watch everything on TV and not feel like you can help out in any ways. In the coming days, there will be more vigils, memorials, and funerals in Lewiston. Constant reminders of how much has been lost yet again because of one man's rage. Chris Pallone, NBC News, Lewiston, Maine. Police found the gunman dead Friday night. His family said his mental health had rapidly declined in recent months, and reports indicate police were aware of threats that he recently made. Investigators are still trying to find out why he did this and whether warning signs were missed or ignored. The appearance that's been eight years in the making. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton heads to a courtroom. Plus, Austin Water customers continuing to come forward after a KXAN investigation looking into new digital water meters. Now, the head of Austin Water responding to concerns that the readings are inflated. Good morning, everyone. This is a live look at our photographer who is on the different highways for you throughout Central Texas. It's a rainy start to your Monday morning. We're going to check in with our photographer, Todd, who is driving around safely. The camera's on top of the car. His hands are on the wheels just to be certain when you're watching this live picture right here for us. Okay, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton will be in a Houston courtroom later on this morning where a date is expected to be set for his trial on securities fraud and charges. It's a case that has seen a lot of delays. Paxton's been fighting allegations he broke state securities laws since 2015. However, he's avoided trial for his entire time as Attorney General. He's accused of defrauding investors in a tech startup. His defense attorneys maintain this will go the same way as Paxton's impeachment trial. That's been a a BS case since day one. That case, like this one, should have never been brought. Uh, they ought to dismiss it. If they don't dismiss it, we'll try them and beat them there just like we beat them here. It has to come to an end, as all criminal litigation does. I think today was the first step in a journey of a thousand miles to make sure that justice ultimately comes to be. Paxton faces two counts of securities fraud. A conviction carries a punishment of up to 99 years in prison. Major road improvements coming to Barton Springs Road, making it safer for cyclists and pedestrians. The risks you need to know about before you take a first sip, as all natural wine continues to grow in popularity. 
Good morning. We have a live look from our camera over in Granite Shoals. You can see it's raining there and throughout much of central Texas. Ready to talk to Sean for the latest on the rain and the cold temperatures as you wake up with us here on KXAN News Today. Early results showing big change on Barton Springs Road, making it safer for walkers and cyclists without hurting drivers too much. And KXAN's traffic anchor Erica Brennis kicks off our coverage on some major road improvements on the horizon near Zilker Park. It's a much safer experience, a much more calm experience for such a dense pedestrian heavy uh, zone within our city. Lewis Leff with the Austin Transportation and Public Works Department has been watching the flow of traffic on Barton Springs Road between South Lamar Boulevard and AZ Morton over the last two months. That's when the city took that stretch of road from two lanes to one. What we were aiming for was a reduction in high end speeding and we've seen over an 80% reduction of high end speeds, which is 10 miles an hour or above the speed limit. So what we've seen is a, a real significant reduction in high end speeds and with really minimal impacts to travel time through the corridor. Austin resident and transportation expert Meg Merritt does her best to use alternative transportation whenever she can. Meg and her daughters got to enjoy the new bike lane on Barton Springs during the Austin City Limits Music Festival. It's a lot of fun, but I'm really careful about where I take them. She'll only take her daughters and her cargo bike on a protected bike lane. Well, frankly, in the time of climate change and with kids and the future generations to think of, I want to be that example, but it's hard if it doesn't feel safe. The city is monitoring eastbound and westbound flow of traffic in the morning, afternoon and evening. Most of the time it's actually making the commute faster, but the one exception being westbound, there's about 10 seconds of extra delay in the morning. So what we've seen is really significant safety results that we were trying to achieve with minimal impacts to travel time through the corridor. The Austin Transportation and Public Works Department will provide public updates early next year at the project's six month mark and then again next August at the year mark. The findings will help determine if the lane reduction could be extended to the west of Zilker Park. What I like about it as a driver is that everybody has their own space. I'm no longer nervous if a cyclist is not going to have enough room. In Austin, Erica Brennis, KXAN News. 447 is the time. People in Colorado woke up over the weekend to a blanket of white snow, with some areas seeing between 8 inches and a foot of snowfall overnight. Take a look at this, although... We're closer to Halloween than Christmas. Of course, these images sure bring in the holiday season to mind. Many people in the small community of Georgetown, Colorado, expressing their excitement about the snow that has arrived. Uh, we are super excited because um, we, this is the second, the first year over here, so we love the snow. We love it. Love this the is the first, first big one. Yep, I love the first day of the that snow. Is in winter. Brings in all the skiers and all of our great <laughs> travelers here to the Circle K here in Georgetown. A few resorts getting ready to open up here in the coming months. Copper Mountain, Colorado saw the most amount of snowfall with nearly 17 inches. That was recorded around 8 a.m. yesterday and right on time they're starting to see that snow kind of build up and the ski resorts getting ready to, yeah. to open yeah. and it's that time of the year. I was over at Copper Mountain during the summer. I, I love mean, it was Copper. pretty. It's be I can imagine how it is during the winter. Yeah. It's it's crazy. It's yeah. one of it's one of the um, I'd say busiest uh, ski resorts in that area yeah. for sure and it's it's a great time. So I've never been there in the summer. I can't imagine. Probably doesn't compare to I what know. you saw. <laughs> We're, we're not that far off from yeah. some of those temperatures here. I mean, it is a chilly start it's, to Monday. It's cold. And then you factor in the, the winds with the yeah. temperatures, it feels even worse. So you need to bundle up and you need to prepare for the rain. We've got a lot going on out there. So let's get you started here. Happy Monday. Hopefully you had a restful weekend. Hopefully you got outside and enjoyed the tropical and warm air that we had over the weekend because we had now have a taste of winter, 39 degrees here in Austin. Look at this. The difference from yesterday at this time, we are 30 to 35 degrees 
colder right now. So a huge difference from yesterday's cold front. Sitting at 37 in Lamp Passes. We're at 39 in Burnett, 41 in Lockhart, 41 in Giddings. And it is windy out there. Winds currently out of the north, 30 to 35 miles per hour. Look what it is doing to the wind chills. This is what it feels like outside. We've got wind chills here near freezing to even into the 20s out into portions of the hill country. So you need to bundle up. You need to prepare for the rain as well and prepare for these chilly temperatures to continue all day long. We don't really warm up all that much. Only seeing those high temperatures come up into the mid to maybe the upper 40s in a few spots. To add to that, I wanted to fast forward here. This is Wednesday morning that we could be dealing with our first freeze for many areas. This is, this is the actual temperatures and we'll be at freezing or even well below it out into portions of the hill country. So we'll continue to keep you updated on that with any changes for right now. A steady ongoing moderate to even heavy rain for portions of Williamson County into Milam County. We've got some scattered light rain out to portions of the hill country. We'll see this here through the remainder of the morning, but generally we'll start to dry out as we get closer towards the lunchtime hour, seeing upwards of about a tenth of an inch through about a quarter of an inch on top of what we've already seen. So the seven day forecast here showing we do start to warm up as we head into the day tomorrow and then especially into Wednesday and Thursday afternoon. We're into the 70s by the weekend. It's a big city and a big job, but we have a lot of professionals here who are committed to excellent customer service. That is the director of Haas and Water addressing customers' concerns raised in a KXAN investigation. Some customers say ever since Haas and Water installed new digital smart meters, their water usage has skyrocketed they believe incorrectly. KXAN investigator Mike Rush finds that while Austin Water defends its practices, more customers have reached out to us with complaints. I think that they have a big issue. Kimmy in Northwest Hills is not impressed with her new digital water meter. This water usage is just way out of whack. A big increase, she says, based on the meter readings Austin Water sent her. For maybe 10, 12 hours at a time, there'd be zero. And then there were days where for an eight hour stretch, it would go up to 220 gallons an hour. There's nothing <laughs> that I do that has that kind of high water usage. She is one of the latest Austin Water customers to contact KXA and Investigates concerned their new smart meter is miscalculating. It shows 139 gallons was used on Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. I wasn't here. In September, we told you about customers like Gabriella Olivirus in North Austin, who said her water bills shot up after the smart meter was installed. Because I live in a condominium, I immediately thought about my neighbor because I thought, well, maybe they crossed the, the lines or something. And according to Austin Water, that's exactly what happened. But Olivira said it took her repeated complaints several weeks and three visits before a crew figured it out. It's very frustrating because that was something um, that they could have checked from the very beginning. So when you see the frustration from these customers that we highlighted in this story, what are your thoughts? Oh, I, I, I absolutely um, sympathize with that frustration. I, I share their frustration. We want to resolve those issues on the first try. Shay Rawls Rolson is the director of Austin Water. While the agency refused our request for an on camera interview for our first story, after it aired and we asked the city manager for a comment on our findings, Austin Water instead responded, offering an interview with Rolson. It only takes a few minutes to install the new digital meter that. Austin Water is replacing 250,000 analog meters throughout the city with smart meters by 2025. So far, it's installed more than 185,000. It's a real game changer. Because the digital system, she says, gives customers information like water usage in near real time and warnings about possible leaks. We're working hard every day to address our customer complaints. Although Rolson says there hasn't been an uptick in overall billing complaints since the conversion started in 2021, Austin Water tells me it does not know how many customers have complained specifically about suspected false readings from the new meters because, as our original investigation revealed, it does not have a centralized, easily accessible way to get that number. But in terms of making sure that we are addressing customer complaints and following it through to completion, 
and our systems are very robust in that way. Rolson says meter testing before installation, quality control checks after, and simultaneous manual and electronic reads conducted through the first two billing cycles help ensure accuracy. So we're committed to sticking with it, the ones that you highlighted to us, the customers that have reached out to us directly. Kimmy did reach out to Austin Water directly, and she's still not impressed. Now we're kind of at an impasse. She hired a plumber whose invoice shows no leaks were found and says Austin Water came out twice and each time said her meter is working properly. After that, they kept on insisting that it had to be a leak. Mike Rush, KXAN Investigates. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Good morning to you. Texas getting set for K-State. Should be quite a showdown. Longhorn State number seven in the AP poll, six in the coaches poll. K-State now 25th. They are two of five Big 12 teams tied atop the standings at 4-1. and one. That's an 11 a.m. kick on Saturday. Noon kick on Sunday for the Cowboys, and, well, they were ready to go, trying to make it 11 straight at home, taking on the Rams and... Well, Dak Prescott sharp, Jake Ferguson touchdown, 7 nothing, And then, Cowboys, how about the defense? 10-3 to the score. Deron Bland, third pick six of the season. Matthew Stafford just floated that one out there. And then, how about let's get the special teams involved. So, Sam Williams with the block punt, safety, 19-3. to And they did not take the foot off the gas. Prescott again. Perfect pocket, and he throws a dart. What a day for C.D. Lamb. How about 12 catches, 158 yards. Dak throws for 304. Here he is again on the scramble and the touchdown. Well, this is about as convincing as you'll get in an NFL game. Why not spread the wealth a little bit? Brandon Cooks gets in on it. Cowboys go to 5-2. and two. Big showdown next Sunday in Philly, the Eagles sitting at 7-1. and one. Well, tonight, Texas Rangers and Arizona Diamondbacks resume the World Series. It's Game 3 in Phoenix. Series is, is tied at one apiece. Next three games in Phoenix. So as long as somebody does not sweep the next three, it will come back to Arlington for a Game 6 on Friday. Back to you. Thank you, Roger. A local organization trying to reduce the number of opioid overdoses. Here from staff at Communities for Recovery on how they are helping people in our area.